Welcome to the dynamic first person reticle tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to add a reticle in the center of our screen for our first person character controller, which will change colors and text depending on what the player is looking at. In this scene, we have a sphere and a cube and a dangerous cube. By default, our reticle will be white and display no text. But when you look at the ground, the reticle will turn green and say ground. When you're close enough to the sphere and you're looking at it, reticle will turn green and say sphere. Same thing with this cube turns green, says cube, and when you look at this dangerous cube, turns red, says dangerous cube. Watch out. For this tutorial, I'm using the first person player controller. There are links in the description to the download and to the tutorial explaining how to make it yourself. I highly recommend you check that out if you haven't already. So I'm gonna delete our cubes and sphere, and I'll be deleting this canvas, which has the FSM for all of the reticle stuff. So let's start by adding in a couple of cubes. This one, I'm just gonna hit Control D. I'm gonna add a FSM onto this cube and we'll call it info. We're gonna wanna put this FSM on multiple objects. We don't wanna have to create it every single time. And we also don't want to have to go in and edit each of them individually if we make some small change to this FSM. So we can make a FSM template. This is kind of like making a prefabbed FSM. So over here in our editor, I'm gonna go ahead and select this state. And if you have multiple states, if you're trying to make an FSM template out of something else, make sure you select all of your states or just the ones that you're trying to templatize. So here I only need to select the one, right click, save template. And you'll see that we're now saving a file under assets, playmaker, templates. So we're gonna call this one target info. And now over here in the FSM tab, you'll see over here it says none FSM template. That means there's no FSM template in here. This is still just a normal FSM. Now, if you hit this three dots button, you can find our template right here. So after selecting it, you'll see that we have our target info template in there. And it also shows up here in the component uh, in the inspector. We can now add any variables we need to this template and they'll show up wherever the template is used. It's a super organized way to set up game data. So over here, you'll see it says click to edit template, click in it. Now under the variable section, we're going to create a string called info. And we're going to create a bool called is dangerous. So this is dangerous bool will be used to check whether or not we should turn our reticle green or red. And we're going to be checking the input box right here for each of them as well. That way they show up in our inspector. And that way we could use templates while still giving each item unique properties. So that info string will be the thing that says ground or cube or dangerous cube, but we're leaving it blank here. And that is dangerous bool will be what we use to check if objects are dangerous, which then decides if our reticle should be green or red. So we're leaving them blank down here in the actual FSM in the editor, but we could set these variables with unique information by entering them up here in the inspector. So for this info, we are putting it on this cube, right? And by the way, let's put our cube back up here. So we could set the unique information for this cube here in the inspector component. Under info, I'm just going to put seems chill. And we're going to leave is dangerous blank so it doesn't register as a dangerous cube. It doesn't turn our reticle red. It'll just stay green and it'll tell us seems chill. The next thing we need to set up is the actual reticle. So we're going to right click here, UI canvas. This canvas is for our UI. So let's just rename this to UI canvas. Now right clicking on the canvas, UI image. So that image game object should now be a child of your canvas. This will be our reticle. So go ahead and name that image to reticle. Right clicking on the canvas again and creating UI text. This will be our info text. So let's rename that to info text. Now to select what our reticle actually looks like, to select an image for it, we could just drag and drop something from over here into the sprite source image slot or by clicking here to browse for it. If you're using our assets, you could find it by searching in this assets tab, reticle simple. So I'm just gonna double click that. 
and now that's our reticle. Now if I select it right here, it'll select it over here in our assets in the project. And you'll see if I select the root item here, over here in the inspector you can see its texture type is sprite 2D and UI. Next with our reticle image game object selected, put your cursor over the scene and hit F and that centers up on the reticle. So I'm gonna look at it like this now. If your reticle isn't centered, what you could do is come over here to this middle and center in your rect transform component. You click it, you'll see here that if you hold shift and alt, you can center its pivot and position to any one of these positions. So holding shift and alt, if I clicked up here in the corner, it goes to the corner, top. You see that? Makes sense, right? Let's put it in the center. Now I'm also gonna make this a little smaller by changing the width and height to 50 and 50. Okay, now let's change some stuff on our text game object. Clicking it, framing up on it by putting our mouse over here and hitting F, there it is. And I'm just gonna scooch it down right underneath our reticle. I'm also gonna change its color by coming over here to color, selecting this, I'm gonna change it to white. And I'll change the alignment to centered. And for this default text, I'm gonna put info just to keep organized. Now that everything is looking nice, we're gonna add an FSM to the reticle. So let's go ahead and add that in. And I'm gonna call this reticle. That's R-E-T-I-C-L-E, -E, but reticule, R-E-T-I-C-U-L-E, -E, is an accepted alternative spelling and is also the word used to describe a small handbag. Okay, so now in this FSM, we're gonna throw in a raycast action and we're gonna specify this game object as our player camera. So this raycast is coming from the player camera. We're gonna put positive one in the Z axis so it's shooting out through the front of the camera. And we're gonna set this distance to five because we only really want to be able to get feedback from things that are close enough to the player. And we're gonna store the object it hits, a new variable called object hit. Now after this raycast, we're gonna throw in a compare game object. And we're gonna have it compare the object hit to a new variable that we'll call current target. On this not equal event, we'll have it send an event called update UI. We're gonna make sure this is running every frame. Now let's send this transition off to a new state called new target. But before we start on the next state, we need to throw in one more action over here, a set game object. And we need to put it all the way at the top. So I'm just gonna right click, move to top, and we're gonna set this to our object hit variable. And we're gonna leave this empty. Having this setup will clear the object hit variable before doing anything else. Without resetting the object hit to nothing, the raycast would just keep the last object it hit, even when it didn't hit anything. So this is sort of a palette cleanser each time we go to the state to fire off a new raycast. We can call this raycast, by the way. Over in new target, we'll add a set game object, and we're gonna set the current target variable with our object hit variable. Next, we're gonna throw in a game object is null action. I'm gonna put that underneath this, which is used to check if a game object is empty or if there's actually a value in it. We'll be using this to check our current target variable. And if it is null, we'll send an event called clear UI. And if it is not null, then we'll go to update UI. So let's add these in. Update UI will send off to the next date, which we'll call update reticle. And then clear UI will send to a new state we can call clear reticle. If we're looking further away than what is right in front of the player, basically whatever is past this five unit distance we have from our raycast, we go back to the clear reticle to set it back to white. But if our raycast does hit something, we want to proceed to the next step where we figure out what kind of thing the raycast hit. So in clear reticle, we can add in a UI graphic set color. And we'll set this to white. 
that'll be changing our reticle back to white whenever it isn't hitting something. We're gonna add in a UI text set text. And we're gonna specify a variable we'll call UI text. Hop over to the variables tab, select that variable. And now we're gonna drag and drop our info text into this value slot. Okay, so back at the actions, we're gonna leave this text blank, so this will just clear any text. The last thing we're gonna add in here is a next frame event. This will send the event next frame. Now, instead of adding this transition here, we'll come over to the Raycast state. We're gonna right click, add global transition, next frame. Without this next frame event action somewhere in the flow, say if we added just a finished transition here that came back up, we would get an infinite loop warning. That warning is Playmaker telling us like, hey, yo, these states just looped over a thousand times, so let's just pause everything before Unity crashes. It's a good warning to have. The next frame event action is used when you run into infinite loop warnings. So you could use this in situations where you want to loop through states every frame. Just gonna get rid of this. Now in the update reticle state, gonna add in a set string value. And we're gonna make a new variable called target info, which will be cleared by leaving this value empty. And then we're gonna add in a set bool value. And we're gonna make a new variable called target is dangerous. We'll be setting the value to false, so leave this box unchecked. Gonna add a get FSM string action, and we're gonna be targeting our object hit variable, and we'll be referring to its info FSM. Remember to spell this exactly as it's spelled on the game object, capitalization and everything. And the variable we want to get is its info variable. Again, spelling and capitalization matters, and we'll be storing that in our target info variable. I'm gonna add in a UI text set text, which will be targeting our UI text variable and setting its value with the target info text. So the first two actions are to clear the previous values for these variables. So the set string value takes this target info string and clears it because we have nothing in here. This set bool value for target is dangerous is set to false by default, so we that's kind of like clearing it with this. And then we use this get FSM string, so it's checking the object that we just hit with the raycast, whatever we're looking at, and it's looking for its info FSM, and then it's getting the info string, and then it's storing it in a new variable called target info. So now we have that info string over here in our reticle FSM in this target info variable. And then it's using that string to set the text of our info text up here in our canvas. So if it said cube, that's what our text will say now. So the next part of this state, we're gonna add in a get FSM bool. We're gonna be targeting the object hit. We're gonna be looking for its info FSM, and we're gonna be getting the variable is dangerous. And we're gonna be storing it in this FSM's variable for target is dangerous. So after we find out whether or not the target is dangerous, we'll use a bool test to decide what to do. Moving this down to the bottom. Bool variable, target is dangerous. So if it's true, we'll send an event called dangerous. And if it's false, we'll send an event called safe. So now we could use these to send off to their own states. Dangerous will go to a new state called dangerous reticle. And safe will send off to a new state called safe reticle. Okay, so first let's do this dangerous reticle. We'll put two things in here. First is a UI graphic set color, and then we'll put in a next frame event. Put that at the bottom. We're gonna make a new variable for this color value. Call this danger color. And hopping over to the variables tab, you can select this danger color. I'm gonna make it a nice red. Okay, and back at the state, we'll have this next frame event 
send off to next frame, which sends back here to the beginning of the FSM. All right, lastly, we'll set up the safe reticle state. Let's just copy and paste these actions. I'm gonna select both these, holding shift, and then control C or command C, coming over here, and then control V or command V. Except here, we're gonna change this from danger color to safe color. And in our variables tab, we'll take, uh, we'll take this safe color and then change this to a nice green instead. If we hit play now, you'll see that our reticle does in fact turn green. Okay, so actually I ran the game and uh, I was like, oh no, why isn't it working? And then I came over here to this getFSM string action and I saw that this info wasn't spelled with a capital I, it was spelled with a lowercase i. And guess what? Like I said, case sensitive. So I'm changing this back. Okay, so now, for some reason this getFSM string was set to UI text, even though this was supposed to be object hit. Oh my God, okay, now let's hit play. And there we go. When I put the reticle over the cube, it says, seems chill. We're looking at the ground, says ground. But if you look away and your reticle still stays green and says ground, what might be happening is, if I come over here, raycast, in this set game object, we need to set this as every frame. Because this raycast and game object compare are also running every frame. This needs to constantly be clearing it. Hitting play, seems chill, ground, Nothing. Ground seems chill. Nothing. Beautiful. So with that template that we set up, we can now throw it on other game objects. So for example, if we want to have our danger cube, we could select this second cube. I'm going to call it danger cube. And I'm going to focus up on it. It's way off in the distance. Okay, I'm going to bring it back over here. There we go. Now this danger cube, I'm gonna add a FSM on it. And then in this FSM, going over the FSM tab, selecting this template, target info. This time in the component over here, I'm gonna select is dangerous. And in the info, I'm gonna put this cube looking sus, dot, dot, dot. And that's all you really need to do. If I hit play, looking around, got the ground, looking up, Chill cube seems pretty chill. Come over here though. I don't know. I don't know this, this cube though. This cube's looking a little sus. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.